In a fast-paced world where women constantly juggle responsibilities, there lies a transformative experience that holds the power to rejuvenate the mind, body, and soul. Imagine the opportunity to step away and pause from your daily lives and the endless to-do lists and your busy schedules. Imagine a retreat away where you can prioritize self-care and embark on a journey of self-discovery. Join us November 8th to 13th for a six-day mind-body retreat in beautiful Costa Rica. Join us in the time and space where truly magical expansion can happen, where women take the time to step away, to meditate through motion, and focus on the inner work. If you crave that deep connection for yourself, give yourself the gift of this mind-body retreat. It's a chance to transform, to rediscover your inner strength, and to create a life filled with purpose, balance, and fulfillment. Join me for this epic adventure where the connections and transformations will last a lifetime. I am very excited to be doing this podcast for you today. This has been a long time coming conversation that I've truthfully been holding off on for quite a while. As some of you guys know, some of you listeners that have been around for a while, I've been really consistent before the new year with releasing a podcast once a week or a couple times a month. And right after the new year, I completely fell off. And so I wanted to address a couple things about that today and share with you why that is and why and what what you can expect from this point on. First, I wanted to share this as we get started in today's conversation. Today is my birthday. The day that I'm recording it is my birthday. And it feels really appropriate because I really see birthdays as a beautiful opportunity to, I don't want to say start fresh, but really evaluate what it is that I'm looking to take on in the year ahead, what it is that I'm taking with me from the year past and really, you know, evaluating what this year past year has brought and what I would like to bring into my life moving forward. So I've been in all the fields today. I had clients at 6 a.m. this morning, um, you know, to start my day off and, uh, it's been just a beautiful day. I've had some incredible clients that have brought some beautiful gifts and it's just a beautiful day to celebrate. So today's conversation is really about the importance of time and the importance of self-care. So my intention going into the new year was to really step deeper into these podcast conversations. I had several guests lined up to interview uh, starting in January, and then January happened and things completely shifted. And let me share about the shift. So you've heard me speak about this before. Health is wealth and being healthy is one of the greatest things that you can do for yourself. Taking care of your body, taking care of your well-being, taking care of your health, taking care of your mindset. And I really think that physical health is the forefront of it all, right? And like I've said before, the mind leads the body, the body leads the mind. And there is this beautiful symbiotic relationship that happens when we start taking care of ourselves. In December, I found a breast lump. And I didn't really think anything of it at the time. December, as for you know, most of you, is a really super busy month. So I was busy with all the things of December, wrapping up you know my practice be- before going away, uh, and then really, you know, wanting to step into the new year, feeling really good. And I traditionally have really dense breasts. For some of those women out there, you'll know that your physician has told you, you know, you have dense breast tissue. So sometimes you can feel anomalies that really aren't of concern. So this has always been in the back of my mind. So in December, when I was like, okay, I feel something, didn't really think much of it. And then January came around and after, you know, the dust settles about the new year and getting back on track with my clients and back on track with my kids in school and all the things in business, the lump was still there. And 
for those of you that know me and those of you that have been tuning in long enough, you know that I'm not typically an anxious person, right? I'm not that one that jumps to conclusions or gets super nervous about health. And even though I've had my fair share of health challenges, I'm not one that kind of feels like, oh my goodness. However, in the course of the last three months prior to January, I've had several clients, several close, close contacts that have been dealing with breast, breast cancer at a young age, right? And I say young, right? Like in our late 30s, 40s, and 50s, because that is, you know, my cohort of women around me. And even though I'm 43 only, it is biologically, you know, middle age. That's the truth. And so when that breast <clears throat> breast lump was still there in January, I immediately called my physician who I haven't seen in a little while and was kind of really nervous. And because it took a little bit of time to kind of get in with them, then get a mammogram and then get an ultrasound, I decided to put a pause on almost everything. It was, and some of you may have gone through this, it was quite jarring at the pers perspective thought that this could be something more than just dense breast tissue because it was significant. So for me, it was probably a pea-sized lump that was quite firm, that wasn't mobile, that was kind of there, that was smaller in December than it was in January. And when I went to my physician, she was like, okay, we're going to get a mammogram. We're going to check all the things out. And I was like, okay. Like, we're going to do this. A very dear friend of mine came with me on the mammogram because she's like, you're not going to do this alone. We need to make sure that you're okay. Like, we're going to go together. So we went together. And it was really overwhelming. I'm the type of person that can push through most anything. I'm the type of person that can muscle my way through a lot. I'm the type of person that is really resilient in face of adversity, of challenge because I've had to be in my whole life, right? This was really different. So when I went for my mammogram and then a subsequent ultrasound, the results were inconclusive. So I kind of was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what does that mean, inconclusive? They're like, we don't know. We need to make do further tests. We don't know. Uh, we're not sure if we need to biopsy yet. All the things. Well, here's where the mindset comes in. It is easy to spiral into places of darkness of like, holy shit, this is it. This is the death sentence or this is the whatever it is that we make up in our heads. But I made a conscious decision at that time. And even, even when I found the lump, I was feeling overwhelmed. And I, and I, I share this because our well-being and our health is the most important thing. And I do everything to stay in the greatest health I can from a preventative standpoint, from a wellness standpoint, from an optimizing standpoint now. And I started questioning myself. I started questioning like, have I done enough? Am I really taking good care of myself? Right? And so at the time, I made a conscious decision to pull myself out of all the things that weren't serving me, that weren't in alignment, all the things that just weren't filling my cup up. Because I knew that if there was a diagnosis looming, that I would need to be firing on all cylinders. And so it was a conscious decision to take a pause on this podcast. It was a conscious decision to take a pause on a couple of my business groups that I was in. I did not have the bandwidth to be able to hold a clear state of mind and to hold myself to be able to generate myself for the things that are required, right? And for me, it's my family, my kids, my business, my clients that are really part of my business. And this podcast was one of the things that I was like, I can take a pause on this and I know that I'll be able to be back eventually, right? But this has been a great time of introspection, right? It is April 25th when I'm and when I am recording this. And it has been a long journey. And going in, so after the ultrasound was done and the, the mammogram, they sent me for an MRI. So I had to go in for a breast MRI. And it was actually quite quick, 
right? Everybody likes to poo-poo the Canadian medical system, but it was actually quite quick. And within a month or so, I was able to get a mammogram, I mean, an MRI. And thank God, thank God. It's just a cyst and it's just a regular cyst. So I need to get that managed every six months to just make sure that things aren't changing and that it is tickety-boo. But it is so interesting to observe oneself when things like this happen and to spiral. I don't want to say spiral, but really the time of introspection that I'm a quite introspective person on a daily basis. I mean, look, I'm, I pride myself on coaching women in their life and in their mindset. So that's part of the practice of being introspective, being contemplative on life and our actions and our behaviors and our thoughts. And part of pulling out from certain things like this podcast, like business groups, is because it was an active choice. And part of the mindset around that is how do we hold boundaries for ourselves so that we can feel our best and feel great? And I got to tell you, I feel like I'm pretty good at boundaries, but putting in a boundary around this time for my well being and for my health was really challenging, really, really challenging because I felt like I was letting people down. I felt like I was letting my business groups down. I felt like I wasn't available because I needed to do this for myself. But in doing that, I learned a lot. And that's what I want to share with you today. In pulling back and holding the boundary for myself, putting myself first, I learned that I'm stronger than I think. I learned that I can do hard things. I learned that I'm the type of person that is quite resilient in the face of challenge. I learned that we can simplify our life to support ourselves with the things that really make a difference, right? That my well being is worth the time and investment and slowing down so that I can take care of myself. Because here's what women are excellent at doing. And this isn't everyone, but I know with being coaching women in life and in their fitness and even sometimes in their business uh, and in their well being and their health. I see this all the time. Women are excellent at giving to others, excellent at giving 110% at the detriment of ourselves, right? And even in the moments of burnout and even in the moments of health conflict and even in the moments of not feeling our best, we rise to the occasion because we feel like we need to, we feel like we should, but it depletes us even more. And because I'm very much about practicing what I'm preaching, I was wholly intentional with pulling back those pieces and holding ground, even when it was hard, even when it felt uncomfortable, even when I had to say no to people that I dearly, deeply love, because I just needed a piece for myself. I needed the space. I needed the time. I needed the solace. I needed the time for myself. And it was quite a healing exercise in that I was reminded that I'm capable of doing this and that boundaries are so important for our well-being. And look, guys, I'm actually not perfect at this at all. I'm always a work in progress looking to improve this. But I know for me, if I'm able to serve my family as best as I can, serve my kids as best as I can, meaning like be the best mom I can be for them, be the best coach I can for my clients, be the best trainer I can for my groups, be the best version of myself in my life, the healthiest version of myself, mentally, physically, emotionally, that it takes something. It takes for me pouring into myself, really focusing on being the best version for myself, right? And so that's where I've been holding space for me, because if we can't hold space for ourselves, no one is going to do it until we are forced to, right? Unfortunately, and I don't know if this is a Western society thing, but 
because I think other cultures are really great at supporting women and their community to take time that is required. But I know that if I don't this, do this for myself, nobody else will, right? And I'm amazing. I'm masterful at saying, I'm fine, don't worry, right? Because women are strong. We are capable. We are, and not just women, people are strong and capable. And we also sometimes function from a place of lack and trying to prove ourselves and wanting to make sure that we are not forgotten and that we are relevant and that we are good enough in others' eyes so that we make sure that we stay the course into what we think we should be doing, how we think we should be acting, how we think we should be in our lives. And so I just wanted to lead by example for myself because I believe that women need to put themselves first, right? Even if sometimes it's uncomfortable, even if it sometimes means that we're not generating revenue from things like our pieces of our business, even if it means that we're not able to show up in places like business masterminds, in spiritual masterminds, right? I pulled myself basically out of two, almost three business groups, right? Because I needed to. I wasn't able to have the bandwidth because here's the thing also. I know I could have shown up. I know I could have mustered up the effort. I know I could have just done the thing because I said I was going to, right? And this isn't to say that I'm reneging on my commitments because I'm still committed to being there and supporting if I need to be, but I wasn't able to show up because if you're not able to show up 100%, does it actually provide value if I'm not able to contribute, right? Let me also be clear that the areas that I am committed to, that I know that I had the bandwidth for, I saw all my clients. I still ran all my programs. I still was there 110% for my kids. I still was there 110% for my friends and my husband and the other pieces that are super important for me and my self-care. But the bandwidth of knowing that I'm spreading myself too thin on those areas and those pieces right now were not in alignment, I needed to pause, right? And actually, you know, I had some financial commitments that I, you know, some coaches that I had that I committed to. So I still paid and completed those commitments, but I just wasn't able to show up on those calls or to show up fully in those containers. And that's okay. And so as I am stepping back into these conversations, because I think that they are so important, this is a, a reminder for you that you are important. You are so important in the context of your health and well being in this lifetime right? And that it is important for busy women to actually step into that and to hold space for ourselves in a way that makes a difference in our well-being, right? You are in charge of your life. And ask yourself, do you find that you are wearing yourself out too thin? Do you find that you're not holding boundaries and space for what is important to you? Do you find that you're often burning the candle at both ends and then there's detrimental impacts and consequences to your action, meaning that your health is suffering. And then do you just push through that because you think you should? Part of the mindset conversation and where I support my clients the most and part of the mindset conversation in, you know, life coaching, in transformation coaching, in mindset coaching is really looking at where do we falter, right? I'm not a psychologist or psychotherapist to really look at where these dysfunctions come from. But from a behavioral science standpoint, from a cognitive behavioral therapy standpoint with CBT meets fitness, this is really asking the question, what is the behavior now? And where is that actually coming from? Does it align from a place of joy and excitement and feeling good and actually emotionally feeling sound about those choices? Or rather, does it come from a place of I have to do this because I said I would, or shooting ourselves, shooting all over ourselves because we think that that is what we need to do. And so this pause in this podcast is was really about giving myself permission to say yes to me and a pause for everything else, right? Because using the word no and saying yes to yourself isn't about disappointing others. It's about pouring into yourself, putting yourself first as a piece of you being your greatest asset in this life and in your life, right? So as we complete this conversation, I wanted to remind you that 
your health is your wealth and you are the most important thing in all of it. And I think it is so important, especially as we move through our lives, right? There are so many different reasons and seasons, but that we become more aware. We notice deeper about what we need, where we're vulnerable, what is important, right? Because what was important six months ago, a year ago, five years ago, sometimes changes and that's okay, right? And that's okay. And I think it is in the reevaluation and in the introspection that we can really look at, is this still really important to me? right? This isn't to say that we don't honor our commitments, but how, but this is actually about how do we honor our commitments, but honor ourselves as the highest level of what we are committed to and the well-being is what we are committed to, right? So as we end this conversation today, I hope that you think about what am I committed to and what am I honoring in my well-being in all the ways, always, right? Because if you can continue to pour into yourself and reevaluate and really ask the question, am I doing these things because I think I should, or am I doing these things because this is actually filling up my cup and part of the grand plan, then you know that you're on the right track, in my opinion. I hope this conversation serves you. I hope that you are doing well. So what you can expect now is that every single week, I'm going to be delivering another another conversation. And next week, I'm going to share with you what the pivot is. It's not going to be a big pivot in the conversation, but with all this introspection comes understanding and clarity as to what really allows us to live our healthiest, fittest most vibrant version of ourselves. And that is, if you guys have listened to the the podcast, a really holistic approach for all the things, right? Because the mind, the body, the spirit, the well-being, the emotional quotient, the intellectual quotient is all interconnected. We are holistic beings. We are all interwoven. And so we're going to dive deeper into what are the things that allow us to thrive? And what are the things that maybe hinder us from feeling, being, and doing our best for ourselves? I'm grateful always that you listen to these conversations. And if this served you, please share it with others because it is only in the sharing and in your, you know, letting other people know that we can grow this conversation and really touch those that it really, really serves. I'm grateful. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll speak to you real soon. Bye for now.